Today we're going to walk around inside of the Ricardo's apartment, but with ceilings and all four walls so it feels like a real home. Hi, I'm Marina Coates. Welcome to Behind the Scenes, where we get up close and personal with all your favorite TV and movie homes. Today, we'll be exploring the apartment from the I Love Lucy show. And we'll have I Love Lucy experts Rick Carl and Tom Watson along for the ride to provide fun insights, facts, and stories. Let's get started. Before they moved to the country, Lucy and Ricky lived in two different apartments in the Mertz's building. We'll be exploring their second apartment today. We'll begin with their living room. The two apartments often got confused because they were so similar. But there were some differences. We'll examine those differences as we tour the rooms today. When you see the living room, there's an easy way to tell if you're in their first apartment or their second. Just look at this wall. If there's a window, it's their second apartment. If there's no window, it's their first apartment. In their first apartment, in one episode, we discover that there is a window on the wall opposite of the piano wall. However, there wouldn't be another window in that same place in their second apartment because that would make the building too narrow. There are other ways to tell the living rooms apart, too. Notice all of the trims and moldings in their second apartment versus their first. On today's tour, you'll be seeing their apartment in color. Rick and Tom both worked on the colorized specials on CBS. Tom was an executive producer, and Rick was a color consultant. There is so much colorized material out there on the internet. People believe, you know, that that apartment was pink and rose, and they believe it's browns, and they believe it's... And when you finally get to the degree of knowing these photographs are realistic color, and then you see the red brick of the fireplace and the framed photographs, because I... Uh, have access to some of those, that tells me that those color photographs are real and they're their proper colors. They aren't colorized photographs. This process let Rick know that their living room curtains were actually burgundy. This got overruled when they colorized the episodes because they wanted the curtains to be blue to match the sofa and chairs but they'll be burgundy on our tour because I want us to walk through the apartment as the set actually was in real life. Rick Carl has extensive knowledge on the props used on the show. Here are some of the more well-known ones from the living room. If you want to see images and names of the props and artwork from the show, I'll have a link below that will take you to my website where you can find more details provided by Rick. As with all the TV show homes I've done so far, the set changes constantly. For that reason, I always have to pick a season and then stick with it. I chose season three, and in particular, an episode called Ricky Minds the Baby, mainly because in that episode we got to see the entire apartment. I always add ceilings and all four walls when I create my TV and movie home tours. Today's no exception. So we will see a wall in the living room that we were never shown in the series. It's always fun to make guesses about what might have been on the wall if it had been a real home. In this case, Rick noticed some pretty big clues. From time to time, we see this table, as well as these extra chairs that match the one at the desk. It's very probable, then, that if it were a real apartment, they might have been placed on that missing fourth wall with the two chairs pulled out for when guests ate with them. Which brings me to a fun fact I learned while creating this episode. Tom pointed out that the coffee table in their living room lowers and rises. It can be lifted up and the leaves extended for when they dine in the living room. And now you know the rest of the story. And now we'll tour the living room. After we've toured each of the rooms, we'll go through the entire apartment in one loop. There will also be links below to see the apartment tour in black and white, as well as a tour of the apartment decorated up for Christmas. 
The Kitchen How can you immediately know when you're in the kitchen of their first apartment versus their second? In their first apartment, there is a door along this wall. Rick9G hosts a wonderful YouTube channel that specializes in facts about classic TV shows. He dedicates one episode to this mysterious door. Why is it mysterious? Because we never see them use it and because if they did, it would simply go out into the hallway, which means you could actually enter the apartment through that door. Hmm. I often wish that the set designers of these old shows were still around so I could interview them. I would have a thousand questions, and this would be one of them. What's up with that door? But mostly, I would just want to say thank you. Thank you for giving us these amazing sets. Here's one more way you can tell the two kitchens apart. In the first apartment, you had to step up in order to go into the kitchen. There was a very practical reason for that. When this series first went on the air, absolutely no one had any confidence that this thing was going to last. And most studio floors are concrete. But Desi Lu wanted that kitchen to be a working kitchen. So that was going to be very time consuming and expensive to tear up the studio floor, put in uh, pipes and electricity. That's why it's raised up six inches. When they changed the apartments, then they put all the, the stuff under the studio floor. Another way you can tell which kitchen you're in, their first apartment had an island, whereas apartment number two had a table instead. We had a little fun with the fourth wall in the kitchen. I asked Rick and Tom what they might put there, and they had a very plausible solution. In one episode, we learned that Lucy is getting a new washing machine. I'm sure you'll remember the episode. The Ricardos sell the Mertzes their old washer, which begins to have major issues. Later, they fight over who it belongs to, and in the midst of the argument, the washer falls over the railing that's outside of their two apartments. And of course, Lucy quips, look what happened to your washing machine. So we not only learn that there must be a washer in Lucy's apartment, but we also get to see where the washer is placed in Ethel's apartment, and it's in the kitchen. So that's what you'll see on the fourth wall as we take the tour now. Once again, the props changed so often that I had to choose an episode to create the kitchen tour from, and I chose Ricky Minds the Baby. One of the things I love about this apartment is that little hallway that takes us from the living room to the bedroom. Of course, it was most likely there, so the set for the bedroom didn't even have to be in place if it wasn't needed for that particular scene. But a greater point is what an element like this can do in your own home. It adds character. In the episode, Ricky Minds the Baby, an interesting thing happened. As Lucy moves from room to room, the camera pans the stage in such a way that we actually get to see the wall that separates the bedroom from the living room. This helped me determine the length of the corner in the living room where their TV sits, as well as the angle of this wall in their bedroom. 
Another fascinating architectural feature of this home is the wall that their twin beds are on. They're recessed into the wall, and the entire thing is framed out with trim with a pediment on top. And yes, it was due to 1950s censorship that they had to have twin beds. It's a miracle there was a little Ricky at all. How can you tell if you're in the bedroom of their first apartment or their second? In this case, one way to tell is the window you see here. In their first apartment, there's a door on this side of the bed that leads to their bathroom. The interesting thing about this window is that because of the hallway right next to it, it would pretty much just be looking out to a brick wall. The layout of this apartment, like most TV homes, is unrealistic, but it sure looks good on screen. Rick Carl provided an advertisement that showed the available colors for the bedspreads that were used in this room. I went with the green version along with green walls. Fun fact, this painting in their bedroom appeared in their first apartment and in several other shows. Now, what would you put on the fourth wall, the wall never shown to us in their bedroom? We put a vanity there for Lucy to sit and put her makeup on. It seemed like something her character would have. After all, Lucy Ricardo was one fashionable lady. One thing that has always amazed me about Lucy is that even though she was so beautiful, she wasn't afraid to do whatever the script called for. Lucy has said that she wasn't funny, which I disagree with, but that she was brave. I think what made her brave was that she was completely uninhibited. It's part of what makes her so endearing. Coming up, we'll tour the nursery along with the bedroom and bathroom. Their first apartment didn't have a nursery, and it was one of the reasons they moved. They needed space for the baby. One fun fact is that when they got the apartment, the people currently living there actually had their grown daughter staying in the room that became Ricky's nursery, meaning she would have had to go through her parents' room to get to hers. Some fun things in the nursery. Notice the Lucy and Ricky image embroidered on little Ricky's bedding. Also, again, Rick Carl was able to find the furniture and the colors it came in back then, and it was most likely gray, so that's what you'll see in the tour today. In this scene, Ricky acts out the story of Little Red Riding Hood in Spanish to Little Ricky. It's one of my absolute favorite scenes and showed us once again that Desi was a comedic star in his own right. All four main characters were so good at what they did. They had great writers, but it was also their timing and delivery. In a few episodes, we get to see their bathroom. However, as is very common with TV homes, it changes from episode to episode. Here it has the shower and the tub separate, and in this episode, the shower and the tub are together. Here's the bathroom in their first apartment. You can see it's very different from their second so it's easy to tell which apartment you're in. The fourth wall here is kind of a no-brainer. It needs a toilet. I added a pony wall next to it with a built-in toilet paper dispenser because that's exactly how it was in the home I grew up in, which was built in 1954. So I at least know it existed that way back then. I also added a window. Coming up next will be a tour of the bedroom, nursery, and bathroom. After that, a full tour of the apartment. Now, as for the placement of the bathroom, we know that this door is a closet, so the entrance must be on the fourth wall. We see that whenever they enter, they are always coming from the right with a wall behind them. So that would mean there's a bit of a hallway before they enter. You can see its placement here in the overhead, but feel free to tell me in the comments where you think the bathroom might go. We'll tour these three rooms now, and then we'll get a full tour of the apartment in one complete walkthrough to help you really get a feel for the layout of the place.
If you're one of those people that find yourself actually interested in the design of the apartment, you may be interested in another show I have on this channel called Cinematically Inspired Design, where we take the design secrets found in set design and learn how to bring those same principles into our own homes. There's a reason you fall in love with these homes. Here is where you'll find out why and how to apply it to your own home. Now to put a rumor to rest. Many of you have seen this popular image online. It's often mislabeled as an overhead view of the actual set from the show. It's not. I wish it was. It's a miniature creation of the set that was created for a tribute to Lucy at Universal Studios in Florida. And if you haven't made it to the I Love Lucy Museum in Jamestown, New York, what are you waiting for? They have replicas of the set there, too, with some different color choices for the living room. And now, the full tour. We'll come in through the kitchen, just like the Mertz's. We'll also take a different path so that you see views you haven't seen yet. Remember that there will be a link below to this same tour, but in black and white, as well as a tour of the home decorated for Christmas. Why do we love this home so much? One possible reason I can think of, we all grew up watching this show. We fell in love with the characters, and they became very real to us, almost like family. And because they were like family, their home felt a little bit like our home, too. Many of us watched the show when we were young, maybe at a time when life was more carefree, simple, less complicated. So when we visit there, it brings back the past, the good parts. Wonderful, sweet, comforting, nostalgic memories. For a short while, it's as though we've been given a chance to relive those peaceful times. And that makes it a place well worth visiting again and again. Hope you enjoyed today's tour. As for now, that's a wrap. See you next time on Behind the Scenes.